When it comes to epic movie franchises, one of our favorites is Pirates of the Caribbean. Jack Sparrow, Will Turner, and Barbosa are all back to set sail on a new swashbuckling adventure. It makes us ask, what film secrets are hidden deep within Davy Jones's locker? Before we set sail though, remember to like this video and subscribe to the channel to join our notification crew, or you'll be walking the plank, matey. Why is the rum always gone? Captain Salazar's Origins After following Captain Jack Sparrow across the high seas in the span of four films, you'd think by now that you'd know all of his secrets. He's lived a full and crazy life. So who knows what's churning right below the surface waiting to catch him. In the fifth installment of the franchise, Dead Men Tell No Tales, Jack's long lost arch enemy, Captain Salazar, is coming for Captain Jack. Salazar is being played by none other than Javier Bardem, who has a long history of playing baddies. We admit, we were a bit surprised when Salazar was announced as the baddie in this film, we've never heard of Salazar before in any of the other films. So who is this villain from Jack's past, and what else has he been hiding from us? We know Captain Salazar is on a quest, but not for buried treasure. In the flashbacks, we see Salazar looking sun-kissed, so we know something sure happens to him along the way, and he wasn't always so green and scary. He's hunting down every pirate on the high seas. That may have something to do with the fact that he blames Jack for making him undead. I know that. I know where I am. Don't think I don't. Real Water in Dead Man's Chest As most audience members and Disney fanatics know, Pirates of the Caribbean was inspired by the Disneyland ride of the same name. Pirates is a fun, water-based ride that takes you through the exploits of pillaging pirates. While traveling in your own personal boat, you'll hear cannon explosions, you'll see skeletons, looting pirates, and most important of all, you'll see Captain Jack Sparrow. The last ride overseen by Walt Disney himself, it's a widely popular attraction, which is why Disney wanted to make a film based off the ride. When your Disney film franchise is about pirates, ships, and adventure on the high seas, you better make sure to bring the water. You can't sail the high seas without the ocean. The water in Pirates of the Caribbean Dead Man's Chest, it's all real. Every drop. Water scenes were filmed in the ocean surrounding the Grand Bahamas and Freeport. Designers built a special tank in the middle of the ocean, filling it with sand and seawater. At the time, it was the largest open water tank in the world. It allowed the production the control over the ship's movements, look, and action sequences. The result? Well, you've seen the movie. You tell us how you think it turned out. Elizabeth Swan, do you take me to be your husband? Will and Elizabeth have a son. Fans will recall in the post credit sequence of Pirates of the Caribbean at World's End, Elizabeth Swan and Will Turner had a child. The location of Will and Elizabeth was not referenced in the fourth installment. Last we saw Will, he took the place as Davy Jones, guiding souls to the other side. We're glad that Elizabeth and Will had the opportunity to be together before he took his place at the bottom of the ocean. Elizabeth's location, however, still remains to be uncovered. But what we really want to know is what happened to Elizabeth and Will's son. Throughout filming of the fifth installment, the inclusion of their son was rumored to be a potential plot point. The release of the trailer teased a new character, Henry. At first, it was not explicitly stated that Henry was indeed their child as the studios tried to keep it a secret. But we all know that secrets can't be kept quiet for too long on the high seas. It was later officially confirmed that Henry is Henry Turner, their son. Henry's being played by Brenton Thwaites. This is a very exciting revelation that has a lot of potential to impact the Pirates of the Caribbean universe. So tell me, what's become of my ship? No one knew that Barbosa was returning in Pirates 3. Pirates of the Caribbean is a franchise full of surprises of all kinds that keep audiences on their toes. You never know who's going to rise out of the ocean or what mythological creature is going to attack the Black Pearl. Sometimes while filming, the cast and crew could be just as surprised as the audience. That's just what happened on the set of Pirates of the Caribbean Dead Man's Chest. As the story goes, Jack Sparrow is sailing all over the world to recover Davy Jones's heart to stop himself from getting enslaved. Throughout the script and filming process, there was no mention of Jeffrey Rush's character, Hector Barbosa. As fans know, Barbosa was a central figure in the previous film. The sequence in Dead Man's Chest where Barbosa appears was kept a secret from the entire cast. His scenes were left out of everyone's script and they had no idea he was filming. The reactions of all the cast, their shocked and surprised faces, they were all genuine. Talk about a crazy and wonderful surprise. So that's the reason for all the... 
Will and Jack both couldn't be cool. Captain Jack Sparrow is one cool guy. Writers of the screenplay Ted Elliott and Terry Rossio imagined Jack Sparrow to be a young Burt Lancaster. One of the highest profile actors of all time, Lancaster has a smooth way about him, and as inspiration for Sparrow, that's a pretty high standard. Combine that with Johnny Depp's character inspiration, rock legend Keith Richards, Sparrow may be one of the coolest characters to ever grace the silver screen. Who else can swagger the way he does? No one, savvy. Someone else secretly wanted to be equally as cool as Jack Sparrow. After all, if you're playing a character in a pirate movie, you wouldn't want to be labeled as the dorky one, would you? During the early stages of filming some of his Will Turner scenes, Orlando Bloom kept trying to make his character as magnetic and cool as Jack Sparrow. He wasn't exactly copying Johnny Depp, but Bloom was using him as inspiration for his character. As much as he tried, this did not go over too well. Director of the film Gore Verbinski had to keep stopping to reiterate to Bloom that Will Turner is not a cool dude. Instead, as Verbinski put it, he told Bloom his character was a dork and to play it that way. It's okay, Will. We still think you're pretty cool. Who am I? I'm Kevin Jack Sparrow. Johnny Depp wasn't always going to be Jack. Once you see an actor play a role, it can be very hard to imagine someone else filling that character's shoes. The actor's face, mannerisms, way of speaking, and choices become synonymous with the character. Anyone else, and you say to yourself, nah, I don't see it. They wouldn't do as good a job. It's like the two become fused, and you can never pull apart the actor from the character again. Johnny Depp is Jack, right? You can't picture anyone else with that hat on, swaggering about with such cool suave, or even saying his lines for that matter. Depp was born to be the captain. I love those movies. I like to wave at them as they pass by. Well, what if we told you that not everyone felt Johnny Depp was the right choice for Jack Sparrow? In fact, Depp wasn't even the first choice to play the cursed pirate. The role was originally offered to Robert De Niro. Could you imagine Goodfellas meets the Black Pearl? We can't either. De Niro turned it down, thinking the franchise wouldn't be financially successful at the box office. Rumor also was the part was written with Hugh Jackman in mind, but he didn't take the role either. Now, we're glad that no one else took it, as Johnny Depp is always going to be our Captain Jack. Can't spot it. Must be a tiny little thing hiding somewhere behind the pearl. New ship for Jack Sparrow. We don't know about you, but it seems like it would be hard to call yourself a captain if you have no ship to steer. In Pirates of the Caribbean, The Curse of the Black Pearl, that's exactly how we find Jack Sparrow, a man looking for his ship. A very special ship for that matter. You can tell it apart because of the Pearl's unique black sails and hull. The Pearl is allegedly untouchable when the sails are up, even being able to outpace other famous ships like the Flying Dutchman. We know just how important this ship is, as Jack Sparrow spends much energy over the first four films either trying to get back control of the Pearl or fighting to keep it. The problem is, at the end of On Stranger Tides, the Pearl was shrunken down so teeny tiny it was put inside a glass bottle by Blackbeard. There's no way he can set sail in the Pearl. Maybe play with it in a bathtub, but not in the open ocean. What ship is Jack Sparrow going to lead in Dead Men Tell No Tales? All we know is Jack's new ship is called the Dying Gull, and we're gonna have to wait until the film to learn more. I hear tell you've been to the fountain. There'll be a lot of hear telling going on these days. The fountain of youth. Fountain of Youth. Sometimes when you see something magical on screen, you say to yourself, I wonder how they did that. The things on screen that appear so effortless can often be some of the biggest challenges off screen. The Fountain of Youth in On Stranger Tides is no exception. How do you bring something to life that's been a myth for hundreds of years? The production team on the film discovered that you don't do it with any ease. The Fountain of Youth needs to have a certain look. It's been hidden away, so it must look undisturbed. The location needs to feel mythical, larger than life, but not so so big it's untouchable. And of course, it needs to have water. Everything in the Pirates movies is so big. The battle scenes, the ships, the costumes, the characters, they easily could have made this set piece elaborate and overwhelming. The film's production team has said that while designing the Fountain of Youth, they looked at more than 60 design concepts. Sometimes it's hard to choose between two shirts while getting dressed in the morning. Could you imagine having to pick from 60? We didn't think so. In the end, they decided on a subdued tone, going with a natural look that projected calm and ancient and familiar. Well, thank you, Jack. You're welcome. Not you, we named the monkey, Jack. 
Rush was third choice for Hector Barbosa. When producers and directors are looking to cast roles, sometimes they already have people in mind. Maybe they saw an earlier piece of an actor's work that makes them think that they'd be a good fit for the role. Or maybe they're friends with someone and would like to work with them on a new film. It's the good old Hollywood way. In Pirates of the Caribbean, this was particularly true for one character in particular, Hector Barbosa. Now we know how the story ends, with Jeffrey Rush landing the part of the fearless pirate captain and nemesis of Captain Jack Sparrow. Barbosa's boots are a tall order to fill. He must be charismatic, yet feared, and ruthless enough to double-cross and mutiny his own captain. He must also have a twisted sense of humor and so much more. If you have something to say, I might be saying something as well. You need an actor who can bring a wide range of emotions and abilities to this character, so that he doesn't come across as a parody of a pirate. Which is why Pirates of the Caribbean Curse of the Black Pearl director Gore Verbinski originally had two other classically trained actors in line to play Barbosa before Rush. He originally wanted the now deceased Alec Guinness or Peter Sellers to play the captain. Neither ended up working out, so they opted for third choice Jeffrey Rush, and we're so glad they did. He is Captain Barbosa. Jack's one of the nine pirate lords. You have no right. King. New female lead for fifth film. For Pirates of the Caribbean, The Curse of the Black Pearl, and the second and third installments in the franchise, there was one major female lead, Elizabeth Swan. Elizabeth was played by Kira Knightley. She started out as the love interest to Will Turner, played by Orlando Bloom, but became so much more over. Elizabeth is strong-willed, intelligent, creative, loyal, and independent. She goes from being a young lady who needs saving to a pirate lord in her own right. Talk about awesome girl power, an integral component to the main triangle of characters, which includes Will and Jack Sparrow, her absence was notably missed in the fourth installment. It just wasn't the same without her sass and fierceness. She was last seen in the post credit scene of the third film. Most recently, fans went crazy seeing a bit of her in the trailer for the fifth installment. We're here to let you in on a secret about the fifth film, as well as break your hearts. It appears that Kira Knightley is not returning to the franchise anytime soon. Like the fourth film, the newest installment has a new female protagonist, played by newcomer Kaya Scodelario. Not too much is known about her yet. She'll play Henry Turner's love interest and hopefully be more than a well-dressed lady on a ship. Well spoke, listen to the two. Are you excited for the new Pirates film? Do all these secrets make you want to throw on your hat and boots and sail the high seas? Are there any secrets we missed? Let us know in the comments below. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, remember to like and share it with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe to CBR for more pirate adventures. Thanks for watching, matey.